As the population of Britain gets older, the demand for adult social care services is going up all the time. In this video, we're gonna look at how black people make up a significant chunk of this adult social care workforce, and we're gonna talk about how immigration is being impacted by this need for more and more care workers to come to the UK and look after these elders. Here you'll see a chart that shows us what percentage of workers in adult social care are made up of each of the five top lines ethnic groups, white, mixed, Asian, black, and other. I'll leave you to look at this chart in your own time, but I just want to point out the, that black people make up 4% of the overall population, but they make up 14% of the adult social care population. Now, if we look a little bit closer, you'll find that black people are particularly concentrated in what you would call direct care roles. When you look at the roles such as support and outreach and care workers, you'll see that the percentage is even higher. Black people make up nearly one in five of care workers and one in five of support and outreach staff. You may or may not be shocked to learn that these roles, these direct care roles, are the least paying roles. This shows you the estimated mean hourly pay rate by selected job roles for 2022 and 2023. Most people who work in adult social care work for independent providers, by the way. So you'll see there that local authority salaries are slightly higher, still not particularly high. For care workers, 11.35. For support and outreach is 13 pounds. That's if you're working directly for a local authority like a council. But when you're working for an independent provider, you'll see that the mean hourly salary for care workers and for support and outreach workers is just 10 pounds and 30 P as of 2022, 2023. We have something in the UK that's called the national living wage, which is supposed to be the absolute bare minimum salary that you need per hour in order to meet your basic needs. And you'll see here that in 2022 to 2023, the national living wage was nine pounds 50. Again, 10 pounds 30 is the mean hourly salary for care workers and support and outreach workers. That's only marginally above the national living wage. And this leads us on to the next point, actually, to try to explain why is it that so many black people are working in adult social care? Care work is hard work. It's tough work. It's very physically demanding. You're doing a lot of lifting. You're doing a lot of carrying. You're doing a lot of manual work that puts a lot of strain onto your body. You're often working very, very long hours, very unsociable hours. You're often having to travel for long periods of time. And the salary, as we've seen, is very low. Because of this, the take-up of adult social care roles from British citizens is very low, which is why there are loads of vacancies all the time in adult social care. And as a result of this, this country has for a long time depended very significantly on workers coming from overseas to fulfill these tasks. Because while £10.34 per hour might not seem like much, or it isn't much for someone who lives here in the UK and maybe you're a family, you know, you've got family to feed and, you know, and all that sort of stuff, £10.34 per hour to someone who lives in Zimbabwe Zimbabwe or someone who lives in India or someone who lives in Nigeria is a decent sum of money. There was a time when a lot of those workers were made up of EU nationals, but of course the United Kingdom left the European Union at the end of 2019, and it seems like that led to an exodus of EU nationals. Whether they weren't able to work here anymore or they didn't feel welcome here anymore, I'm not sure, but it seems like that led to a spike in vacancies in the adult social care sector. Now, of course, these people still need caring for, these elders still need to be looked after. And so what's happened? Well the sector has turned to the so-called Commonwealth. During the pandemic, there was a bit of a lull in visas being, being uh, issued for adult social care. After the pandemic, after the lockdowns, you've seen a big spike in visas being given for health and skilled workers, health and care, which is, which is the category under which care workers come under. And most of these visas have gone to people from the so-called Commonwealth. By my rough calculations, enough Africans came to the UK in 2022 and 2023 on this care worker visa to fill up Emirates Stadium, Arsenal's home ground in London. And this is an apt comparison, of course, because Arsenal is extremely popular amongst African people. And Arsenal Football Club itself has made many overtures to its African fan base. Most recently, the new Arsenal football kit is a, supposed to be a Pan-African inspired kit with the red, black and green color scheme. And of course, Arsenal have been sponsored by Rwanda, the government of Rwanda for the last few years, which is why they've got Visit Rwanda on the sleeves. However, Rwanda does not make up a significant chunk 
of the care workers who are coming on these on these visas. What you find here, you'll see that this shows you the, the difference in the numbers of people coming on these care worker visas from 2022 and 2023. You'll see significant chunks of people coming from Nigeria, 20,000, Zimbabwe, 17,000, Ghana, 12,000. And then you've got lower numbers, but still significant coming from Kenya, Cameroon, Uganda, and then a few small numbers from Zambia, South Africa, Malawi, and Sierra Leone. Now, of course, when we're wondering why people are coming from Nigeria, from Zimbabwe, from Kenya in such large numbers, it's clearly because of the economic situation back home. All of those countries have, are facing extremely difficult economic times right now. In Nigeria, just recently, there's been a currency crisis, which has led to extreme hardship among the people there. And of course, Kenya has been experiencing a tumultuous period as a result of the economic woes there. And so, unfortunately, it's a sign of the times that as has been the case for many 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 years Africans are finding themselves having to leave Africa to go and try and make ends meet and they're coming to countries like the UK to fill up these very low paid roles because it's better than what they've got on offer back home and recent reports have been coming out suggesting that there's a level of abuse and exploitation and even modern day slavery in the care work sector so for example this article from the Guardian a couple of weeks ago in August 2024 mentions a six-fold rise in foreign care workers in the UK complaining of exploitation. That's based on the Royal College of Nursing report, which calls for an investigation into the sector. It's, it's deep, actually, because what, when you read these reports, it seems that employers are making promises about salaries and working conditions. They're making promises that they'll, these people will get accommodation. And then these people are coming here to the UK and finding out that a lot of this was lies. They're being put in terrible accommodations, sharing a room with several other people. And one of the dynamics of this, which is so just so shocking and sad is that what often happens is that people over back home in Nigeria or, or Uganda, Ghana, whatever, Zim, are paying money to certain companies for them to get them a visa. It could be thousands of pounds, five, ten thousand pounds, which is a colossal amount of money for people in those countries. I've seen stories about people selling their houses back home in Harare, in, in Zimbabwe, selling their properties to be able to get one of these visas to come here, such as the desperation to, to escape from what's going on back home. But then they come here and then those companies are telling them, oh, right, you need to pay us back this money. Are we going to take this money out of your salary every month until you paid us off. And bearing in mind these people are working on basically minimum wage roles. They're being left with nothing. They're being left destitute. They're being, you know, and, and the worst thing about it, when they say they want to leave or they threaten to report their companies, the companies say, right, we'll just report you to the home. We'll cancel your, your visa, report you to the home office and you'll get sent home. And this is what we're seeing. I don't know how prevalent, how widespread this stuff is, but it appears to be particularly widespread. And in one of my recent videos, I talked about the black tax, the, the the requirement that, that these people who are coming here have to help their families and, and uh, dependents back home. Can you imagine that the, the, the pressure, the psychological pressure, the emotional pressure, the mental pressure, the physical pressure that these people are under, knowing that they're, you know, they are products of their families who have paid for their education and schooled them up, and now they've gone abroad, they've gone to the UK, and it's up, you know, they're obliged to help out the family that actually made it possible for them to come here and have the success that they have in the first place, and yet they're under all of this crushing burden of of stress and poverty basically probably can't even tell their families back home the truth about what's going on because that would crush their families back home it's a it's a diabolical situation it's a really really sad situation actually and for me this should act as a wake-up call for us as African people in particular often I see people coming in my comments talking about how Africans are doing amazingly here we're getting really high grades at school people talk about how well I'm working in tech or I'm working in a, you know, I'm a corporate banker or whatever and all my friends are and most of my family are. I think what we're seeing, particularly amongst Africans in the workforce here in the UK, is that yes, there are a significant number of, of us who are working in high paid roles in influent, influential roles and all that sort of stuff. But there are many, many more who are working in at the other end, if you like, of the of the employment spectrum in very low paying roles, very hard work. And I think it's incumbent upon on us, particularly as Africans, but just black people in general, to just realise that exceptions don't make the rule. Overall, when you look at our the average salary of black people here in the UK is much lower than most other groups. We've, I've talked in my videos about the, the, the wealth, the household wealth amongst black people in the UK being much lower than most other ethnic groups. When I'm making these videos, I'm not just trying to slag off black people. I'm not trying to just focus on the bad stuff because it's something that I find entertaining. 
I'm doing it because we need to understand and realize the situation that we find ourselves in. We're not gonna be able to come together and work out solutions to our problems together unless we understand that there actually is a problem. And if we keep trying to trick ourselves into saying, oh, we're doing well, we, there's so many bankers, look at Kemi Badenoch, we're doing so well. If we keep fooling ourselves with that sort of talk, we're gonna just be sleepwalking into underclass status, okay? And that goes as well for our countries back home. For those, for, for our brothers and sisters who are coming over here, I understand why, why they're coming over here. My parents came over here, you know, we came over here many decades ago. But the fact of the matter is that until we sort out our countries back home, until we sort out what's going on back home, we're gonna keep having to escape to other countries to get work. I mean, I, you know, in future, I'll probably talk about what's going on in the Middle East, the amount of our thousands of thousands of our people who were heading over to the Middle East and getting exploited there, getting exploited in the Far East, in Asia, China, Japan, USA. At some point, we're gonna have to, as a people collective, work together and I'm, I'm pleased and glad to see that there are rumbles and movements going on in Nigeria in Kenya to Zimb in Zimbabwe as well to an extent that's what we need the way that China got itself developed wasn't by sitting around and you know hoping the Chinese got dirty they got their hands dirty first of all they physically militarily liberated their country and then they they had a period of militant self-development if you like national self-development they developed their country up to a point where now it's an economic powerhouse yes there's poverty there there's poverty everywhere but China compared to China where it was in the 1960s to where it is now it's completely different and unfortunately for African countries compare where we were in the 1960s to where we are at now I don't know in some ways it's a lot better of course but we've got a long way to go so I hope this video has been useful and insightful for you guys and looking at the care sector here in the UK adult social care sector and talking about some of the dynamics involved and I should say as well that all of the sources that I use in this video can be found at my substack which is ellie1ander substack.com go over there to the, to the link in the description and you can see all the links to the references that i use and also please do sign up as well become a subscriber on the substack so that you'll get these emailed to you every week when i do these videos let me know your thoughts as ever as usual of course i've got lots of other videos that you should find interesting there's one here which uh, i think dovetails nicely with this topic and also youtube will recommend one here using its algorithm all right take good care peace out